your advocacy on behalf of service members, veterans, and their families who have suffered debilitating injuries and effects of burn pits. What is the top challenge that you hear from soldiers when they return from deployment about accessing, about accessing treatment? Well, first of all, uh, Senator, thank you uh, for having me. Um, uh, lots of challenges. You know, that question just brings up so many uh, uh, ideas in my mind of things that we've tracked through our own uh, in a private registry. Um, and off the top of my head, it's, you know, access to, to health care monitoring, specialized health care, both on, on the DOD and VA side, but primarily DOD, for those active service members, for those reservists, it's a challenge uh, when, when they don't have uh, trained occupational medicine doctors assessing these underlying issues. Um, and then secondly is, is filing for presumption for these illnesses that, that are underlying, right? So if you don't have the specialized health care, how can they properly... Uh, transition them through the compensation and disability process. Right. Well, thank you. Um, what information or resources would be most helpful to the service members you work with when they return from deployment to ensure they're getting the screening and treatment they need? I, I think, you know, definitely uh, make, mandating that the clinicians be trained, and I think Dr. Zema can help me here, but um, absolutely uh, having every clinician, every nurse, trained in the area of airborne hazards, uh, documenting in the record, you know, in the um, electronic health record on the VA and DOD side, that uh, they are identified as having had undergone some type of exposure. Um, and, you know, to say the least, I've had this conversation recently uh, with, with many people about even just something as small as signage, right? Like during, during the World Trade Center, uh, there was there was communication and outreach and signage on if you're experiencing these issues, um, you know, people are, are having to access care through people like Dr. Zema, and they have to fly to New York and fly to Vanderbilt and fly and exhaust their life savings like our family did. That, that, that shouldn't be happening in America. And, and so we, we need to start, and we need to start now. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Mr. Porter, um, thank you for sharing the survey results of your members. Why do you think only 59% of IAVA members are registered in the burn pits registry? Dr. Rausch testified as to some of the steps the DOD is taking to increase participation in the registry. Have you seen an increase in those registered over the years among your members? And what do you think can be done to better encourage more service members and veterans to participate? Thank you for the question. Um, this we started, this came up when we developed the Burn Pits Accountability Act a few years ago, um, because if you look on the, the VA website, it has a running total of those that are, are registered in it. And at the time when we looked at it, back in uh, 2017, there were only 140,000 uh, entries into the registry. I think it's probably double that now. Uh, I haven't looked recently yet, yeah. um, but it was only 140,000, and that's out of, again, VA's estimate is, is as many as 3.5 million have been exposed. Um, so for only 140,000, that presented a big challenge. I think that the, the main problem with that was that the um, reason for that is, is because hardly anybody knows about the registry. Mm -hmm. um, so through the passage of that bill, we talked about it a lot, and we put it out, out, out a lot of social media on that, and we've also encouraged the VA to do more about that to get the word out to veterans that this registry is here and then why somebody should be in it. Um, you get, I understand, a, a a free health exam if you're in the system. Um, but again, it's not qualifying somebody for a presumption. I think there's a misunderstanding there too uh, that the veterans should apply for, the, for their, um, their disability. And they're getting turned down about three quarters of the Time. people that apply. You testified that the Eiler system, that if the Eiler system's done right, service members and veterans will have significant transparency into their exposure. What does done right mean to you, and what are the critical components of Eiler that must be implemented to make a difference in the care service members and veterans receive? Well, what right looks like is it, if somebody was deployed to Balad, Iraq in 2006, then that Eiler should be able to give them uh, the data from what they were probably exposed to in 2006 in Balad. Same thing with me. Um, I traveled around 
Afghanistan all over the place, so it really couldn't be pinpoint to one location. So that just shows how complex it was. Um, so I traveled around the whole country frequently. Um, so it'd be harder for that. But again, it should specify what you're exposed to during your deployment during a set period of time. Um, now I'm going to turn it over to Senator Warren, and she's going to chair the meeting while I go vote. 